Deuteronomy 28, I'll give you the verse later, I'll give you the title later, there was a true story, very powerful thing in Europe, this is a true story, he never fully surrendered to God, he never got saved, and in the process of time he started to do very unusual things, uh, like he shook hands with a tree once, and thought the tree was the king of Prussia. Um, he would talk for hours, he had a certain type of, uh, they call it mental disease and a lack of mental health, uh, but um, it's a very demonic. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this medical term. I don't want to get it wrong. Um, he it, it was um, logorrhea is characterized by the constant need to talk. Occasionally, patients with logorrhea may produce speech, which is slightly faster than rate, and symptoms include neogelismia, which is words without clear. Def, uh, derivation, enunciation, words that have no apparent meaning, and in some extreme cases, uh, new words and new word constructions. Uh, unchecked nonsense. Under pressure or lack of self-correction, the patient may exhibit. So, sounds a lot like Joe Biden, actually. <laughs> and uh, he would shake hands with trees, and um, he was... Uh, depressant and manic and one of the most shocking ones is he was at a theater performance once and someone tried to assassinate the king and I mean they like some full-on bullet and everything and they arrested the guy and grabbed him and threw him down and he's like I don't want to leave the theater keep the performance going and they did and they have intermission in between performance you know intermission and he took a nap and he was just almost assassinated 20 minutes earlier okay this guy was insane he was crazy Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we're just going to read a few of the curses. Go to 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the earth, and all and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with emrons, that's hemorrhoids there, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. And here it is. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness and astonishment of heart. The title of my message is God Made Him Mad. And I don't mean mad as in I'm angry. God made him insane. God made this king mad. God has done this to many people throughout history, as you're going to learn today. Now, go to uh, keep, your, keep your finger there in Deuteronomy 28, because we're going to go back to that several times. But let's, let's build a foundation Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, 1 through 4. We preach about the STDs. We preach about hell. We preach about death penalties. We don't preach too often of God making people insane. Thus saith the Lord God, verse 1, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor, and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Some of you might be poor, and you might be of a contrite spirit, but you might not tremble at God's word. You're lacking some of the fear of the Lord. This word should pierce you when you read it at times. Verse 3, he that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man, and he that sacrificed a lamb is as if he cut off a dog's neck, and he that offereth an oblation is as if he offered swine's blood, he that burneth incense is as if he blessed an idol, yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations, I also will choose their delusions, I will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. 
but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that which I delighted not. He says, I will choose their delusions. I will choose their madness. I will choose the different insanity that comes upon them for their wickedness. Did one of you forget your Bible? You must have had one of you. No? Y'all normally don't share a Bible. I normally see four Bibles there. I don't care if you share a Bible. I'm just wondering if one of you forgot. It doesn't matter. Now, a good rabbit trail, which I've decided not to do for time. Uh, they're speaking of insane people. That's the other people in the park there. It would be to read verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. But I think I'll go ahead and not do that. So you can read the little further of going on, which is very good. Uh, now go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Because this is not just Old Testament. This is New Testament. And this is in history. And this has happened before and it will happen again. Of God making, snapping people's brains. used to be one of our memory scriptures. We actually have three of our memory scriptures today. We had one in Acts, and now we have the 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12. Chapter 2, verse 9. Ah, I'm in 1 Thessalonians. The demoniac across the street distracted me for a second. I'll preach to him later. Uh, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. This, this is why they're getting a strong delusion we're about to talk about. They receive not the love of the truth. You've got to not just like the truth, accept it doctrinally. Jesus is God. You have to love the truth. Love the truth. Or God will make you crazy like that guy in the parking lot who's walking around in circles full of demons right now. <laughs> Amen. But here it comes. Verse 11. For this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God will send the strong delusion. Hey, James, film that guy real fast. He's yelling firefly. Anyways, okay. back here. Percent of the people that are born with the Down syndrome, the autism, the certain situations. Okay, we'll talk about the one percent later. But there are. I'm going to give you some famous kings that uh, God made crazy here. Caligula. He was the Roman emperor during the early days of the church, from AD 37 to 41. He had extreme paranoia. He had cruelty, and he was at megalomania. And I was like, megalomania sounds like a guy full of pride. I'm like, let, 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 me, let me look this one up. And th this one might fit, might fit Trump, I'm not sure. Uh, megalomania, obsession with the exercise of power. Oh, no, that's Biden. Mm -hmm. um, especially in the dominion of others. The delusional belief that one is important, powerful, or famous, uh, and is a symptom or a mental disorder. Megalomania is what we could call people. And this guy was extremely cruel and he was extremely paranoid. Uh, Caligula. Of course, Emperor Nero, the homosexual who had his own mother killed. Killed his mom. And he was very psychotic and he was also paranoid and he thought he was a great actor. So he would go and do, star in his own play and act and, you know, and uh, people had to applause and do this and that. Um, Justinian II, uh, 567. 574 it says uh historical accounts many have said that his mind was agitated and he behaved like a wild animal he behaved like a wild animal but he was still the main king for nine years there philip the fifth of spain from 1700 to 1724 he was extremely melancholia M-E-L-A-N-C-H-O-L-I-A. -E -E that means he was depressed, he had bodily complaints, and he had hallucinations. Hallucinations. Uh, trees talking, trees walking. This thing, that thing. Hallucinating. Fully. Hallucinating. Full of demons. Each one of these ones are full of demons. Okay? And there's more than that on, on, the, on the list there. So God makes individuals mad, crazy, insane, delusional, uh, schizophrenic, catatonic, bipolar, frigid, sleep 14 hours a day, 
extremely violent, and many other mental diseases. Now, 99% of it is demonic, and the demons are sent by God. The demons are sent by God. Everyone say, by God. By God. Yeah, he does that. And sometimes he just does it himself, as we'll read in two examples here. There is the 1% that is born with uh, extreme autism, born with the um, Down syndrome. I don't think I have to explain that. Or they got in an accident and like literally hit their head in their 20s, 30s, 40s, car accident, driving, and something's there. But anyone else? If they weren't, if you just ask two simple questions with somebody, if I wanted to talk to that family over there, I'd say, was there something born or was there an accident with the crazy guy? And if they say not born and they say not accident, that's demonic, okay? And it doesn't matter what else they say. They, say they, they can even say he's raped as a child. They can even say he did drugs. They can even say he was a bad hit of that. They can say this. They can say that. No. It's demonic. Period. And God sends it. God makes people mad. Let's give two examples. First Samuel 16. This is King Saul. This is Bible. This is not the new doctrine. First Samuel 16, 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, anointed David, in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of God came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. A little side, side teaching here. Uh, the Spirit of God was upon him, and he didn't go sl slay Goliath right then. He went back to his father's field and tended the sheep. So the Spirit of God comes upon a preacher. It doesn't mean he's supposed to go out and pastor right then and there. And it was a long period of time and training, and he had to kill a giant first and had to serve in the king's palace and get some spears thrown at him and get through some lessons and, uh, you know, listen to Abigail in that one situation so he didn't bring a stain to the name of God and kill a Nabal. He let God kill Nabal instead. There's many things David had to learn first before he was promoted. Even though 13 says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him that day. 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. See that? An evil spirit from Jesus troubled Saul. God sent that evil spirit. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Look at that. The servants even knew it. They said it came from God. How? They know it, and American Christians don't. Think everything's from the devil. No, God is sending these spirits and making people crazy. Lord, uh, let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God, they said it twice, is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now. He's like, I want it now. I'm the king. I've got pride. Give him to me now. Now. A man that can play well. And bring him to me. I'm not going to go to him and seek it out. He needs to come to me still. Because you know, the whole world still revolves me around me. That's what the insane people think. Then answered, and by the way, side note, in insane asylums, uh, they have a few people that say they're Napoleon, a few people say that they're George Washington, that are crazy, but the highest, ten times higher than any other person that they claim to be, is they say, I'm Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And they fully believe, I am Jesus Christ. I'm in here wrongly. They're doing this to me, doing that to me. It's literally ten times more than all the other crazy ones put together. Okay? You want to not cast out the demon? You put him to death. Okay? They're incorrigible criminals, every one of them. But they did the drugs twice. They did that tongue twice. They did some other crazy sin twice. Of course, you preach to them for a while and get things to manifest and see who comes out to defend the home logger, because a lot of them are gay, and you put them to death. Moving on. Bring him to me, 18. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in manners, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Look at that. He's not only a mighty man of war, but it says he's prudent in matters. He can be trusted with the sheep. Can, can you trust your sons with the animals? Can you trust your daughters with, uh, you know, cooking something? Can, you, can, can they be prudent in some matters? There's more than just street preaching. There's more than just warfare. 
There is need to be prudent in some matter. Can they be prudent with some money? Can they be prudent with some responsibilities? 19. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto David and, and uh, unto, excuse me, he sent it unto Jesse, because he was still under uh, the roof of his father, unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them uh, by David his son unto Saul. And some people judge Jesse harshly. Why is he giving all this stuff to Saul? He didn't know the spirit of the devil, the, the demon was upon Saul. This wasn't common knowledge. People were like, oh, we wanted a king. We got a king. He's anointed this and that, you know. And mm -hmm. hey, maybe he's going, hey, I've seen Samuel come and anoint David. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send him with a bunch of gifts. Well, sometimes you might give to a heretic on accident. Mm -hmm. And then you have to repent later and say, I'm sorry I ever gave money to that person. Okay? Well, you didn't, you're going off the information you have now. You're not God. Okay? 21. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. He's like, oh, cool. I get to sit under King Saul. I do this. I, I'm loving this guy. He loved him greatly. That's what your Bible says. David had a soft heart. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, uh, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God, everyone say from God, there it is again, was upon Saul that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Because God's not the author of confusion, and his anointing doesn't fight his own anointing. So the two local pastors fight, one's right and one's wrong. Okay, that's just period out, it's going to be. The, the anointing of David, the Spirit of God was upon him, and so the spirit of the demon that came from God left. Okay, and then when David left, the demon came right back every time, every single time, until finally Saul killed himself. Um, now go to Daniel chapter 4. Let's look at one where God does it directly. God doesn't send a spirit this time. And Saul started doing crazier and crazier things right after that point. Killing priests, visiting witches, almost killed his own son for breaking a fast his son didn't even know about. Okay? And then, uh, kill, and then uh, dies in battle. And basically got it, kills himself. Daniel chapter 4, verse 22. We're going to read the rest of the whole chapter there. Um, this is Daniel talking in 22. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hewn the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make uh, thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet the, with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, that means seven years, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. And Daniel was a man of righteousness, so he knew the answer. Here he says, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto the end. Break off thy sins. How? How do you break off thy sins? You just wish them away. You just repent. You just do this. It says by righteousness. Break off thy sins by righteousness. It's not just stopping doing the bad thing, you goat, you fake curse. It's starting to do the right thing. Okay? You go do some preaching. Go share some revelation with some people and get persecuted. Break. You don't even need to do right. Not just 
pour the cup out and get rid of the bad stuff. And uh, That's why people raise religious kids. Oh, he doesn't play the video games. He doesn't do this. They're not doing this. The women aren't gossiping. You know, they're not dressing like whores and all that. Okay, but are they doing righteousness? Are they, are they ashamed to hold a sign that says abortion is murder? Are they, are, they, are, they, are they too busy with their playland to, to say I can't go out on a Saturday for a couple hours? Break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If it may be lengthening of thy tranquility. So even God knew, Daniel knew I couldn't fight against God. And he says, hey, if it may be <laughs> to the lengthening of thy tranquility. It's, if it may be. Meaning you do all this, God still might judge you. <laughs> okay? But it, but it may be that he'll have some mercy like he did Hezekiah. You know, He knew the story of Hezekiah. Daniel knew the stories of Isaiah. That was pretty recent history for him. He knew all of them, actually. It didn't matter if he was Cain and Abel. <laughs> Daniel knew the whole, the whole history. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, what patience and long-suffering. He gave him 12 months to repent. He might not give you 12 months to repent, so don't take that as your, your timeline. He walked, you're not a king or a queen. He walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon, and the king spake and said, and pride always speaks. The abundance of mouth, they always speak. You know, you're in my ministry, my this, my that, my YouTube, blah, blah, blah. The king said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it to whomsoever he will. 33. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. I like, I like uh, <laughs> Levi's little riddle there. Who, who did the longest Daniel fast in the Bible? <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, seven years eating grass. Hey, that's true. <laughs> that's, a, that's a long more time. But imagine that judgment. God snapped his brain. God is in charge. 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. In histor history, most of the time, it never does return. All these kings and all these examples I gave a few minutes ago, none of, it never returned to them. And God reprobated them and was done with them. Uh, but he can, because nothing's impossible with God. Uh, my understanding returned um, unto me. And I bless the Most High, and praise and honor him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. You know this one, right, Church? Mm -hmm. We memorized this a year or two ago. Poor Brother Levi moved here. It's a good one to memorize, guys. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. You're nothing, I'm nothing, we're all as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? <laughs> Not just stay his hand, but you can't even say, What are you doing, Lord? <laughs> what are you doing letting Joe Biden win this election? What are you doing killing this preacher? What are you doing on this? What are you doing with the, you know, your family member dies? You say, Well, Lord, I trust you and I obey. Isn't that our song? We say, I trust and I obey. At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and my glory for my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. So he made a good exclamation, but he didn't actually follow through. And he did die and go to hell. And his proof was his son and his grandson and the fact that they didn't start doing theonomy and executing idol worshipers and 
doing what Josiah did. Okay? So a guy can get some illumination and do some things and still not go to heaven. You have to follow through. All right? And this guy's the exception, not the rule. You know? Uh, and, and it seems to be harder judgments upon these kings compared to upon a uh, regular demoniac, demon-possessed guy on the street or out in the middle of India or whatever. But um, most of these ones never come back. Uh, now, I don't want you to think, though, this is just about individuals uh, being mad and being insane. He does the same thing to fake churches, fake street preacher movements, and bad nations. To the whole nation, makes them mad. And this maybe should have been preached a year or two ago when we had a lot more COVID madness going on. You know, uh, churches, uh, like letting queers in the choir, uh, letting women behind the pulpit to preach, letting fags go out on outreach with them, you know, do, not handling sin in the camp, and sending them strong delusion that they think they're okay and think they're men of God. They really think that. Uh, nations like America that recently said, no, one mask isn't enough. You need two masks. That's insane. That's crazy. Uh, hey, a vaccine for teenagers and adults, that's all we're going to push. That's it. That's fine. Oh, no, no. We need to also vaccinate the five-year-olds and the little babies, too. Raining while it's sunny. Crazy. Love it. Thank you, Lord. It's so funny. This message is what God puts on my heart. We literally have the first time in the park ever a totally insane guy walking around yelling crazy stuff. Thank you, Lord. It's a nice confirmation, you know? Um, how about 50 million, 60 million aborted babies in America? And they say, oh, no, that's not enough. We got to, you know, sell some of their body parts for research, you know, and uh, women uh, facial skin cream, you know, and, and, you know, let's increase the flavoring of the food uh, out of these uh, baby derivatives too. You know, 90%, our church knows this, you internet people, 90% of the food sold in America is made out of the baby derivative. It's part of that artificial sweetness. Mm -hmm. And uh, they never, and not even tell the public. By the way, we're not even going to tell them. We're just going to, we're just going to deceive all of our own citizens for that long. It's insane. God has made this nation insane. We're being handed over to madness so that God can send this nation to hell. Yeah. That's why it's happening. God turned many other nations over to madness, and then He judged them. And in some cases, like the wicked, wicked child sacrificing Aztec. Civilization, he just wiped them all out. The whole civilization totally wiped out. Canaanites, totally wiped out. But others like England, he just made them lose their status as the world superpower and took them down to number two, three, four on the list, you know, further down, depending on where you want to put China and Germany and whatnot. You know, England's a lower superpower. They used to be number one. So it depends how he wants to judge that nation. But either case, they were sent madness ahead of time by their leaders who were mad. Their parliament was, it's just as easy for God to deceive 50 Congress people, 100 senators, as it is one king. It's not, not, no difference to God, same thing. Time doesn't permit to go into all the biblical examples of mad people in the Bible. Uh, Nimrod thought that he could build a tall tower that would escape the next flood that God would send. He thought he could get above the judgment of God. That's what the tall tower was about. They're like, well, if we make it high enough, they knew about Noah, they knew the flood. They're like... God gets mad at us for all our sin we're doing. They already were sinning. Okay? Then we'll be above the judgment of God. Be our own God. Anybody thinks they're above the judgment. That's insane. That's crazy. Even knowing that God just killed billions of people. Totally insane. Eli, he gets told he's going to be replaced. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> just like nonchalant. No big deal. I, that's a reprobate. Aaron's two sons. Think about Aaron's two sons from their perspective. They see the Red Sea part. <laughs> they walk through it. They see the ten plagues upon Egypt. They see their dad become an idiot, make the golden calf, and Moses come down and hammer it and break it, and 3,000 get killed with a sword, and Aaron repents and ducks and ashes, and they're like, wow, we're seeing some mercy and grace. Maybe I can get some of that grace too my daddy got and offer some strange fire. Listen, Father, it's just because you got away with some stuff. Don't think it's automatic. Your good kids are going to get it. And kids, don't think just because your dad didn't end up in prison 10 years or, or die of some crazy thing that that means you get an extra pass or your mom went through some crazy stuff that you get it. That's a sin of presumption, and that's the greatest sin of them all. Aaron's two sons were mad. They were crazy. They were insane all the things you see in Numbers, Leviticus, that they personally saw, and they said, we're going to offer strange fire, we're going to mix a little idol 
Roman Catholicism in with this pure thing, this purity. Oh, God hates that mixture. Kill him. Fire. Another example. A man brought his demon-possessed son to Jesus, and he said, the demon throws my son into the fire and into the water to try to kill him. Please set him free. And Jesus set him free. And, you know, a little kid was going insane. You know, most suicides are, are, are for age 15 to like 25. Okay, there's not too many 12-year-olds, 10-year-olds killing themselves. And it's because of the wicked public schools and all the trash and all that other demonic stuff and everything. But in order to get past 25, the suicide rate's way lower. It's way lower. Except for the home community, it's still high. Ooh, that's just street preach that. In Acts, uh, there was a demon-possessed man who beat up and stripped naked seven men. Now, most likely, I don't think that man, he stripped them totally naked, but I think he ripped off their coats, their outer garments, and they ran out in public, you know, with maybe just a t-shirt on, you know, what God calls nakedness. I'm not totally sure, but it's very possible. It's just ripping off coats and ripping them, and they're like, oh, I'm naked, I got my white t-shirt on, they run on out. Okay, but that's a crazy demoniac guy. Uh, Paul shows up to a new city, and this demon-possessed witch who's a psychic who does the future is like, hey, didn't really do the future, thought they did. Was like, hey, you're the man of the most high God. These men are the most high preacher gods. And Paul's like, yeah, I am. Let her, let her do her crowd. Let her do that crowd. She was mad. And it came from God. And then God moved on Paul, cast that demon out, set her free. And he did. But that was probably just like Jesus walked by demon-possessed people and they weren't set free. Paul and Peter walked by demon-possessed people and they weren't all set free. Jesus walked by blind, pe blind people and blind Bartimaeus got healed, but the other blind people didn't. Paul and Peter walked by people and didn't heal them too. Extreme madness. The wicked, abominable Catholic Church, after ruling and killing true saints for 1,260 years, right around 538 to about 1798, I need to double check and memorize these dates, but around 538, Justinian I, his son was the one that went crazy. I just learned that. So he was the one that did right and killed a bunch of homos at the right. And then the, the Pope withheld communion. And he had to repent for doing the right thing. Justinian the first had to repent for doing the right thing. And he's like, all right, I'll give you communion now, King. You're under my thumb, under the church thumb. And that became the first Pope with total political power right around 1738. Exactly 1,260 years later, 1798, is when Napoleon took the Pope prisoner in the Vatican. So they were smashed down on, you know, under John Knox, John Calvin, and Reformation, and nation after nation, all the way to the point of like literally being smashed down to um, being a prisoner in his own little palace there. But the mad and sane Catholics still didn't repent of trying to have world dominion. And the Jesuits are still pulling strings today. The Jesuits are above the 33 degree Mason. They're above it. The Jesuits are above the Illuminati and the Jews that print money out of thin air, sorcery. Okay, the Jews are above that. I mean, excuse me, the Jesuits are above that. They're, they're the ones still doing all these things. So these guys, let's go to Revelation and just look at some insane things. Uh, Revelation 16.8. about the insane Catholic Church after being smashed down, Pope taken prisoner, losing country after country. They never give up. You think Islam is aggressive? No, no, no. These guys are aggressive. They just do it subtly behind the scenes. Revelation 16, 8 and 9. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And the men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. They repented not. And back in, you can look it up later, Revelation 9.21. Revelation 9.21 is the Muslim hordes coming in doing this, and the Catholic Church, it says they repented not. Babylon repented not. It, didn't, it doesn't matter how much stuff. Their leaders are reprobate. The popes are reprobate. So, of course, his main followers are. Mm -hmm. The main top Jesuits are reprobates. Absolutely. Probably every single reprobate. Every Jesuit is probably reprobate. Thinking about it. But for sure the top ones are. And, and one third of the priesthoods are fags. So that's one third of them are reprobate. And that's just what's known. So it's probably like 99%. God gave him that reprobate madness. Only a reprobate beyond salvation would still move forward with folly like Eli did. And say, oh, that's what happened. Or with like Saul and go to the witch of Endor. Now back to America. The madness in this nation is a judgment from God. It is. And uh, this madness is a preview of hell itself. 
and it keeps descending worse and worse, just like hell has lower and lower pits of hell. Lower pits, worse and worse and worse for the, you know, for the Muhammad, for the Pope, for the pedophile. Okay, and it keeps descending worse. And you know, hell goes on forever. Well, this madness can go on for a lot longer than you, would, you expect, church. That's why I say, live like Lord come back tonight, but also live like it's 100 years. The madness could go for a lot longer than you expect. Now back to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 29. One of my favorite verses. I have many in the Bible. 29, 29. Oh, pastor, how long is it going to last? How much crazier can it get? Are you going to try to force vaccination on my kids? Is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? 29, 29, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Not unto me, unto the Lord Jesus. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Well, the Lord's revealed theonomy to me. The Lord's revealed hard preaching to me. The Lord's revealed homeschool revelation to me. The Lord's revealed historicism to me. The Lord revealed, uh, you know, what, what is nakedness on a, on a man or a woman, you know, a little higher standard, amen? amen? You know, but the secret things belong unto the Lord. How long is judgment going to happen on this country? How long? How much more crazy can it get? Crazier. It will get crazier. Because there hasn't been revival, so it has to get crazier. There's no other option. Unless a revival hit, it will get crazier. Absolutely. Okay, back to Deuteronomy 28, go 53. Just back a page there. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. The flesh of thy sons and thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness, wherein thine enemies shall distress thee. So they're going to eat their own kids. And that did come to pass. That is crazy. That is insane. Can I get an amen there? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. We got the loud table. We got the quiet table over here. Can I get an amen? I'm not going back to school. Hey, get an amen there. Yeah, they ate their. That's crazy. And here's the type of people, the men and women. Make sure you and your kids are not on this list. So that the man, this is about the man first, that is tender among you. He's a little effeminate. He's a little tender boy. He's a little tender man. And very delicate. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat. You know, this is so crazy because most sinners recruit. Hey, you want to get drunk? Let's get drunk together. I'll buy you a drink. Here's a joint. Here, hit this too. They're always recruiting others for sin. But in this case of cannibalism, insect, uh, kid cannibalism of their own kids, these people are so depraved and wicked as they're eating their own kid, they're going to say to their own wife and the other one, like, no, I'm not sharing this meat with you. I'm not sharing with you. I'm not going to evangelize my sin into your sin also, like every other sin out there. Every drunk that buys the other guy the beer. Every whoremonger tries to get the girl to be a whore. Every whore tries to get the pure young man to be a whoremonger. Am I right? Yeah. Homos recruiting homos. They're all trying to be sin evangelists, but not this one. That's how depraved they are. He's like, I'm not going to share this. Kid, this is my food. I'm starving. There's going to be starvation again in the end. Don't think World War III is going to just save you. It may be a long, slow grind down. And let's talk about women. 56. And the tender and delicate women among you which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter. That's why I tell my girls, you get dirty sometimes. But hey, I'm not talking about overboard, like unclean craziness, but dear I be so delicate like some China doll. But also not the extreme of being like some tomboy. Okay, it's like, okay, your feet get dirty, you get dirty, big deal. Okay? But these ones, though, are too tender, too delicate. This is a very evil, self-centered woman. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be a bad wife, too. Evil toward her husband. Uh, how far am I going? 57, 58. And toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly, in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. 
because she's going to eat them secretly. The dude's just going to eat them out in the open. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Because you need to fear that. You need to fear that. And 50, uh, and I'm going to get to 63 later. And okay, for those of you with false piety, say, oh, you know, only God, you know, Ezekiel says, oh, God doesn't rejoice over the death of the wicked. And that's partially, that is true in some wicked cases. Well, how do you explain, Mr. Pietas, verse 63? And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. Let me read it again. So the Lord will dis rejoice to destroy you, to make you mad, to make you insane, to reprobate you. He'll rejoice to destroy you and bring you to naught, and you shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. And we know Psalms 58, 10. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Okay? There's a lot more on rejoicing over the, over the death of the wicked than there is not rejoicing. And I'll tie, I, I explained it in my old sermon called Dynamic Tensions, and, and that series gets into that. So, what's the conclusion? Uh, we cannot argue or debate our way out of this. Uh, we cannot vote our way out of this. Uh, but we will vote because, you know, we'd rather have, you know, a little more time, a little more free speech for another four years and then instead of them taking it away with hate speech and all that stuff. We're going to do the 4G and the 2P. Everyone say 4G. 4G. 2P. Everyone say 2P. 2P. P is a preach and pray. We're going to preach, street preach, preach on the pulpit, and we're going to pray, and we're going to pray, and we're going to pray some more, and we're going to fast and pray, and we're going to preach. That's the P. That was easy. 4G, God, guns, gold, garden. God first, guns second. You gotta have guns to defend your family, even if it, gold means some silver coins, some savings, assets as an ammunition and guns. Those are assets. Those are things that barter and trade. There will be a lot of people starving and killing each other. Uh, EMP nukes go off. That'll happen. But after a while, the super bad guys will all be dead because they'll be trying to raid and loot and getting shot. And I don't know, three months, six months, and it'll be back to bartering. People you do want to barter with. Bartering is there. The 3G is important. And garden. What are you going to prepare? Okay? The, you know, I don't just have weeds everywhere. Get something going. Expand it. Have the kids help. 4G. Okay? You know, th these are the least that I do in my thing. I'm not sure what you do. But that's what I do. You know, and hey, sure, what if the government crazy is trying to control its own citizen? Levi and I talked about the week or two. You know, government control everything, and, and it's them over there. They're the whole beast and everything else. And maybe America doesn't get judged with nukes, and it just becomes a total dictatorship over there. Okay, how are you going to survive? Same, same answer, 4G and 2P. <laughs> same answer. How are you going to survive if it's that way? It's, it's easier, and I say easy, it's easier if a World War III breaks out and all the governments fall, which eventually it will, and historism, six vile, that'll eventually happen, okay? But what if it's a long, tyrannical, slow grind? Then what do you do? They just keep notching it up and notching it up and notching it up. What if it's a long, slow grind? And God slowly brings the madness on America, which is kind of what I'm seeing. It's slowly bringing in madness. We don't know when the cup of wrath is full, but it's a long 20-year grind, 30-year grind, 10-year grind. Then what? My garden will be bigger and bigger year after year. The chicken herd will be going bigger and bigger. I was broke, and I'm like, well, there's six bucks each. I'll go buy six chickens. One died, and I'm getting like four eggs a day, five eggs a day. I whoop my dogs. They steal that eggs. Oh, I whoop them. Stealing food off of my kid's table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So God is bringing all this madness, this insanity on individuals, nations, and fake churches. And many of the fake churches have fat men as leaders. You know, a fat guy dies and just two other fat people take over, you know. No, nothing's going to stop God until he's done. <laughs> he's, nothing's going to stop him. And the end of the madness um, is, uh, is just regular reprobation. They become a reprobate. Or, in many cases, homo reprobation. Uh, to do disgusting, vile stuff with poop and with blood is the height of madness. Uh, no one chooses to be gay. It's a curse from God. It's the worst of the worst thing that can happen. It's God already casting them off because they were already so wicked. 
And uh, oh, we got all day. Let's read this. Go to Romans 1.20. It's been a while since we went to Romans. We're on the last page. I'm on the last page here. We'll look, we'll look at how this reprobation went down. 120 to 24, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood. Now they all hold it in their hearts. They have enough to be condemned. Sinners have enough knowledge to be condemned, but not enough knowledge to be saved. Being understood, that's why they need the gospel. Being understood, they understand these things by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. Even the sinners know there's only one God. None of them say three persons. <laughs> Have you ever heard any sinner say, oh, yeah, you know, this God and that God and the other God? I mean, yeah, heathen. I'm talking about American sinners. Like, these guys know there's one God. They got the wrong God, but they don't talk about three persons. They talk about one God. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they knew God. There it is. They knew God. They had some knowledge there. They weren't born a sinner. They knew something in their heart, five, age five, six, seven, eight. They knew God. Here's step one. They glorified him not as God. First step to reprobation, not glorifying God. Neither were thankful at step two, not thankful, but became vain in their imagination. That's step three. The imagination's been vanity, pride gets bigger and bigger. And their foolish heart was darkened. That's verse four. God starts darkening their heart at this point. They're doing the first stop, first three steps. God's now doing that one. Pharaoh first hardened his heart, then God hardened his heart. That was the correct order. Uh, the fifth step, reprobation, is number five, is number 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So now, oh, no, I'm wise. No, I know better. I know this. I know that. Oh, really? And change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to bird and four-footed beast and creepy things. That's step six. Wherefore, God also gave them up. God turns them gay. God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And God's not an Indian giver. He's going to give it and give it back. Once he gives them up, and get, get, they're over, then over. They're not, they're not ever coming back. They're reprobate. 28. You don't need to read about the lesbos and gays. You can do that later. 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And he gives them a list of the things that they do. So God gave them up to a reprobate mind. Not just individuals. God gives fake churches up to a reprobate mind. God gives nations up to a reprobate mind. He gives them over to madness. Over to madness. And as I read in the beginning, in 28.5, If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do his commandments and all of his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now the king at the start of the sermon who survived an assassination attempt and went to sleep 20 minutes later was near the end of his life also struck blind. And his name was King George III. And his legacy was losing the 13 colonies and losing the war that we won. Because his church, Church of England, which is wicked, tried to say every preacher in America has to be part of the Church of England. He started to act like a pope. God snapped his brain and later made him blind. And his legacy, besides being crazy, is that he lost the war. Thank God for that. He was fighting against the will of God, and he lost. All that break God's commandments will get his curses. The only question is, how severe are they going to be? Kids, you break God's commandments, you'll end up getting God's curses. The only question is, how severe is it going to be? Okay? How severe will it be? Every, every head bowed. Everybody praying.